Everybody ready? All right. Um, my name's Droops, and today we are going to be talking about creating your own. Hold on a second, I opened the wrong ones. <laughs> Recent documents. Sorry. Okay, my name is Droops. Today we're going to be talking about creating your own Linux Live CD. We're going to be doing it two different ways. One, remastering Slacks, which is a live version of Slackware, and then we're going to be using the Linux Live scripts which is how Slacks is created off of Slackware. Um, we're going to talk about some Linux basics real quick because there's people in the audience that don't have as much experience as they would like to have with Linux, which they need to have. And I don't want to cover something that they're like, what the hell is he doing? So we're going to do a little bit of that. Um, I'm in two little clubs. I'm in the Infonomicon.org club. And we have a little computer club that uh, does lots of little neat things. And I'm also in BinRev, the home of the uh, Digital Dog Pound. And they do lots of cool stuff too, like magazines and TV shows and a really long learning radio show and mess like that. Okay, why are we doing this? Is we are learning about Linux, which is a good thing to do. And I've learned a lot doing this talk. Um, maybe you don't want to release your distro. Maybe you just want to make your own personal one for uh, tools that you like. Like Backtrack is a really neat little CD and it's based off of Slacks. So you can make your own copy of Backtrack that has your personal stuff on it. And every time you boot the CD, you have your tools. And you might want to teach somebody something like we're doing with Slastrisk. And you can make a CD that has exactly what you want on it, put it in a bunch of computers, and everybody's on the same page. Um, we'll get into that in a second. Doo -doo -doo. All right, we're going to need a couple things. You can use Windows for some of this mess, but I don't really talk about that because that's dirty. And uh, you need a Linux computer. Run in whatever like, you like. Um, you can use a Slacks computer, just put the live CD in, boot from it, and use that, which actually is a really easy way to do it. Um, QEMU is a process simulator like VMware, and that's how you test it without having to burn CDs and reboot them. Um, Linux Live Scripts, Slackware Linux, if you want to do it from Slackware. And the Slack book is really, really good. Um, when I bought Slackware a long, long time ago, it came with this little skinny Slack book that is still, to me, the best reference of Linux. Because it's just, here is very, very basic information, and it walks you through. It's really good, and it's free. Okay, first things first. Like in Windows, you have your C drive, and then there's uh, documents and settings, and there's Windows directory, and there's program files. Linux has the same thing. It's got boot, root, home, dev, mount, temp, things like that. Um, you don't have to memorize everything that's on the slides. I put a lot of charts and crap like this in it, so you can go back later and look at it if you're curious about it. And here's a really good example of that, of this really awesome graphic I found. Okay, um, partitions. When you boot up Slackware for the first time, it asks you to use FDisk and partition your drive. And when I started with Linux, that confused the hell out of me. Um, eight, or M is help. Print it, and it makes a lot of sense. And it divides your disks up. So like in a Windows example, if you had all of your my documents in a separate partition, and you reinstalled Windows, it only affects the first partition. It doesn't affect your D drive, which would be your second partition. And uh, that's how it's done in Linux. You only need two. You need a swap, and you need a root. And the root needs to be bootable with that little star over there. Um, the swap confused me a long time ago. And it needs to be twice your RAM, unless you have an ungodly amount of RAM, and then just make it uh, a gig. Uh, Bash is the command prompt in Linux. There's a really good manual, and I didn't really go into much detail there because there's another manual on your computer. It's called man. If you type in man bash, and the way I'm doing the commands, if there's a dollar sign, that means type it into your, uh, your uh, terminal. And it'll show you all your information about most of the things that are on your computer. Um, in Windows, there's file extensions. In Linux, there's file extensions. .exe is a Windows executable. We all know that. But then there's different packages, like a Slackware package, a Red Hat package, a Debian package. And those are the program that's been configured to run on your version of Linux that you have. Um, TAR is a tape archive. And it's here's a directory with a bunch of files. You tar it. And it's one file that contains all that stuff. You can untar it. And there's your directory. Uh, .gz means it's been zipped. 
and uh, Slack's modules are .mo. That's really important. So open a tar. Does everyone know this? Is there anyone that's getting anything from? Good deal. There was one guy. So uh, open a tar. You do this, and if you do man tar, it tells you what those little options are. To open a .gz, you can uh, use g unzip the sum file.gz, and there's shortcuts to this we all know, but he doesn't. Sorry, funny boy. Okay, file permissions. It is really big, I'm not gonna talk about it, but if you wanna make everything writable, editable, and executable by everyone, it's 777. So if you write a script, which is just a list of commands, um, you just put it 777 and it works. Um, text editor, we're gonna be using MC Edit because it shows, well, it works like Notepad. It doesn't have all the cryptic stuff like Vi, or Vi, however you wanna say it. And it shows the escape characters, which is really cool. Don't erase those when you're editing this stuff. All right, Slackware boot process. The first thing it does, it goes to Lilo. And Lilo is what points it to what version of the kernel or what you want to boot. If you want to boot Windows, it will, uh, you can set that up. And it'll go to your Windows partition and then boot from there if you're dual booting. Then it moves on to your kernel, which is Linux. And then the kernel goes to Etsy init tab, which you can open up. It's a plain text file and see how stuff goes, which is really good if you're wondering how it goes. Like all those text things that are scrolling is the init tab and the rc.s. Open those things and play with them. This is what init tab looks like. As you can see, it's plain text. You can change your run level, which is this little three, which right now is set for multi-user mode. So more than one person can log in. But if you want it to go straight to X, which is your GUI, you change it to four. Neat stuff like that. OK, if you want to install something on Slackware, if you download a Slackware package, which is a dot .tgz, you would type install package, the name of the thing, and it will install it for you if whoever made the dot .tgz did it right. The usual way of installing something in Linux is most of the time there's a configure file that you run it like that, then make, then make install, and it compiles it for you. OK, now the interesting part. We're done with that. About Slacks, it was written by this guy whose name I can't pronounce. It's a live CD based on Slackware, and it was created with Linux Live Scripts. There's all kinds of different versions of Slacks that he makes, and there's a whole bunch of other ones that other people make, like me. Um, there's a guy named Wolfen that makes Wolfix, and it's on the... Um, oh, sh <laughs> It's one of the top 100 Linux distros on DistroWatch. And there's other ones like Backtrack and Wax. Okay. If you want to edit Slacks, download it. Um, I'm going to go through the commands, sorry. But uh, SU means want to go to super user. You do this in the directory that you're in, and then you make a directory called Slacks. The, this mount command, command mounts the uh, Slacks into the Slacks folder. So when you browse Slacks folder, you're seeing what's exactly on the CD. And you can not edit any of this because it's still mounted the CD. So we make a directory called the new distro. We copy the stuff that's in Slacks to the new distro, change the permissions. It's a live CD. That's not the best way to do it, but it's a live CD. And it's only got one person logging onto it, hopefully. Then you get, unmount the Slacks, and you move that directory. So what you're left with is a directory called new distro. OK. In the Slacks CD, it has a little bit different directory structure. That's what it is. The important ones are modules and the optional. Because that's mostly what you're going to be messing with as you make your own version of Slacks. Modules loads .mo files when you put them in this directory and you make an ISO. When it boots, it boots everything in boot, then it moves on to modules. And so if you want to put Audacity on there, you find the Audacity module and dump it in. The optional folder, you put modules in that you don't want to boot. And if you decide, hey, this time I want to boot it, or if you have your distro running, and you're like, hey, I wish I had this running. I've got it in my optional folder. There's a command to open them out of there. It's really easy to put Slacks on your computer. Just boot the CD, go to the Slacks website, download different modules, and play around with them. And easy to install, things like that. Um, base goes numeric and then alpha, then uh, alpha, whatever that's called, Alphabetic. alphabetically. And uh, You're sorry. Uh, so it goes like that. And if kernel or uh, core.mo has a file and slacks.mo has the same exact file, because slacks.mo is loaded after core, it'll overwrite core. So you don't have to open these up and edit them if you want to change some file in there. You just have to add it in your own module and number it a higher number. Now, does Slack compile the ML files, or how do you get the ML 
I'm going to get to that. Okay, what is a module? We talked about that. If you want to boot a uh, optional, that's the command to boot the optional, and the user live mod command to boot it after you've already got it going and you didn't do the first command. Okay? Root copy is an important folder because you don't have to make modules of files you want to put in there. You just put your directory structure into root copy. So root copy etsy init tab is etsy init tab when it boots up. Really easy way to test things. Good thing like that and it's loaded after all the modules. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay, how do you make a module? It's really easy to take a Slackware package, .tgz, and use tgz to mo to convert everything over to a module. So you've got your new distro directory. You download something, make it into a module, dump it in the uh, modules folder, and you compile the CD, it's ready to go. There's a deb 2 mo, rpm 2 mo, and there's a directory 2 mo. It's easy. Yes, it, from Slacks. Good deal? Okay. Um, there's a lot of things that don't have a Slackware package. So if you wanted to add dsniff, which is a neat little tool, when you compile it, you do check install instead of make install, and it makes a .tgz. Easy as pie. How to edit a module. You can open a module if you create a directory, and then you do mo2dir and then type the module name in, and then the directory that's supposed to, the formatting's bad, sorry. It'll load that module into the directory. So you can look at it, see what's in it, play around with it, then you can make your own with directory 2 mo. This is pentest.mo from Backtrack, and me just looking to see what's in it. So you can go to this and you say, oh, I wish I had some of this stuff from Backtrack. You can just take it out of there, find all the things, or you can make your own. OK, to build an ISO, you're in your new ISO folder. You can run this uh, script, make ISO, and then type in your direct, what you want to call your ISO. And it takes a little while to do, maybe like less than a minute, and that will build your ISO for you. I'm really talking fast, sorry. There's a Windows tool, which I didn't really play with a lot, called MySlex Creator, that can't make modules, anything like that. But if you download a module that's already been made, you can add them into your distro. Which, easy for quick things. Um, the QMU, which is the process emulator, you tell it to CD-ROM, and then you tell it where it is, and it will test it for you. It runs a little slower, but it's a lot easier than burning a CD. And there's the Windows command, because it's kind of cryptic and not documented well. Okay, this is the customizing of Slacks, because now we know how to open it, look and see what it's got. Boot Splash is not very well documented how to make a .lss. It's a 16 color bitmap, pretty much. And it looks like that on the default install of Slacks. You can go to your boot directory in your Slack CD, splash.bitmap.gz. You need to install this net PBM, which doesn't come with a lot of distros. Um, it's easy to find. And you can open up whatever your editor, your picture editor. I use XPaint because it's plain and simple. And then if you use these commands, after you save this, you make a PPM and you convert a PPM to a .lss. And then you put it in your distro, run QEMU, and hopefully you didn't change the colors too much and have your 16 color image and it works. This is one that I made off a logo that someone else made for our Slasterist distro, which is kind of neat. We're, we kind of like it. OK, you're welcome, which is right under this where it says, welcome to the Slasterist Live CD. Is a simple text file in boot. It's called splash.cfg. This isn't just in Slacks. This is in all Linux. So if you wanted to say, hey, welcome Droops to your computer, you just edit that. Plain text file. There's some cheat codes in Slacks, which you can tell us to do different things. If you want to call your distro Ponyboy Linux, you don't obviously want to type Slacks into boot Ponyboy Linux. You want to type in Ponyboy Linux. So you can open up this file and change this. And then when you turn it back on, you still have to type slacks. But if you edit this file, iso linux.config, you change the default to whatever you want to call it. So if I was doing this for slasterisk, I'd name this slasterisk, I'd change that to default slasterisk, and then when I booted it, you'd have to actually type in slasterisk. And that works on all Linux. 
Okay, your login prompt is etsy.issue is the name of the file. And you can add colors and all kinds of cool stuff. Also another thing for all Linux. There's lots of cool stuff you can do, like your current date, system name, current time, stuff like that. It's just a slash and then an M. And you have the architecture identifier of the machine. So you can have lots of really cool nerdy information when you boot your CD. To do colors, like if we scroll back and we look at that clover, it's a bunch of C's and O's. So right here, it's telling it that it needs to have bold on with the one. And for 32, it needs to come down here to set foreground color to green. So that's why that part is green. And those are called ANSI color codes. There's a good list of them. Um, the host name, when it boots up and it says, you know, slacks, and then your dollar sign for your command prompt, you don't want that to say slacks, you want to say Ponyboy Linux, you edit host name, it's slashgrist dot, and don't forget the dot, whatever you want to put there. Um, users and passwords, for slacks, the default is root and the password is tor. When you boot slacks and you log in with that, you're actually not doing bad because there's no outside services running. You don't have SSH, you don't have Apache, you don't have any MySQL, anything. So you're good, but it's a good habit to get in of just typing P-A-S-S-W-D and changing your password when you log into this distro. Because you might say, oh, this module is really cool, but included in that module is also SSH. And now you're running an SSH with a root and tor. And that's really not good, even though it's a live CD. OK, frame buffer. Slacks does not use it. You have to enable it. And you can type in this cheat code, which is really cool. Or you can edit these two files. And what the frame buffer is, without it, when you boot slacks, it looks really old and not high tech. And when you enable the frame buffer, you have a lot more space on your screen because your text is smaller. It looks more new. And if you're doing a command line distro like Slasterisk, you're going to want to have that extra room to read everything. Here's ISO Linux.config. Add that little value in, and you'll have your frame buffer there. And when you boot it, it'll have a lot more room. But you'll still see all that mess on top of the login. So if you edit your init tab file with that right there, which I really don't know what that means. I'm sorry. When it boots, it raises it up and moves it over. So it clears the screen and does that, which makes it look really nice when you boot. OK, when, if you have X running, which is your GUI, start X goes to the slash dot uh, XNITRC file. And if you want to change it to start XFC, you just type start XFC4 in that file. And when you type start X, it goes like there. Um, the squiggly and the slash means it's your home directory. So as root user, it's slash root slash dot x9trc. OK, config save saves all your change files in those directories. So we're running slacks. I change some of the stuff around to play with it. And I run config save, and I tell it which module name. And it will save all those changes in a, con in a module. So you just put that in your modules folder. And when you boot it back up, it's got all that. All your changes are saved, which is kind of neat. You can also save them to thumb drive, save it like that. I usually just save it and then FTP it up. Web config is a very, very insecure thing that Slacks has. And it allows you to save your files on the Slacks website. And it's protected by a username that they call a uh, passphrase. And it's a single over 10 character passphrase. So if I save mine with Droops is cool, and he says, I'm going to use Droops as cool. He's going to overwrite everything I got. Or he can read everything I've got. And if I was doing something with passwords and important information, he's got it. And you can write a script that will really suck all that stuff down quickly. So um, when you do web config, and then you tell it your passphrase, when you reboot your computer with Control-Alt-Delete, it transfers all that stuff over there for you. It's very seamless. And it works really well, other than the whole password thing. When you do this, don't forget to delete temp files. If you're planning on giving this to people, clear out your browser. Don't save passwords in your browser. If you check your Gmail and save the password, and then give that module to your friends, they've now got all your information like that. Um, this is a screenshot from Anonymous OS, and that's their bash history. And that's you know, no big deal, but maybe there was something they did good 
that would be interesting. OK, is that clear? Was that too fast? Everybody questions? No? You're all just blank. OK, the Linux Live Scripts is a way of taking your own distro that you've got running on your laptop. I'm running Slackware. And I can make this really, really big ISO file. You can get it at linuxlive.org. Um, written by the same guy. It's used to make this stuff. I believe that when Backtrack releases a version, they install their version, their developer version, and then use the Linux Live scripts to make their folders. So you don't have a 01 underscore kernel dot mo. You just have a slash etsy dot mo, slash root dot mo, which kind of keeps people from taking all their hard work and incorporating in their things. Um, if we want to do this, we would install Slackware. And it's very easy to do if you're kind of a Linux newbie. After you install Slackware, you use your Slackbook, and you can download a pre-compiled kernel that has your squash FS and your union FS, which is the coolness that Slacks uses to have a file system that you can edit and play around with on your live CD. There's all these commands to do all this. Pretty much you retrieve the stuff, then you install it, and uh, I have a script right here that does all this, so you don't have to really remember all that. Um, when you're done with that, you run Lilo, which says, hey, there's a new kernel. Use this when you boot up. And then change the permissions on the UDEV. And then if you edit this file that we've already opened on line 139, which looks like this, if you just type exit right there, you don't get an error when Slack boots. So we have it. How are we going to set this up? Um, Linux Live has lots of really cool stuff. But when you run it, it's got all the default Slack stuff, like the Slack's boot screen. That's in slash boot in the Linux Live scripts wherever you install them. So you can just set that up once and have it for your little distro that you want to make. Um, this runme.sh, which is in the Linux Live folder, creates your live CD. And it's always called livec.iso. After you create it, run QMU, test it. That's what it looks like when it's doing it. OK. Man, I'm really slipped fast. OK, this is a uh, hacker convention. And what kind of live CDs are there and what makes them special? Like there's Backtrack, there's Wax, there's Auditor, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, we all may have tried these, and we all have things that we think we like about them. And we're going to have a little contest to see who can make their own. I've got these slides up on my website that are available so you can look at all the charts and the commands that are kind of boring to read off to you. But uh, we're going to have a Linux Live contest. There is no list of point-worthy things. We're just going to look at it and see who can make the coolest little hacker distro of sorts. Or maybe if you don't want to make a hacker distro, make something else. But you have to provide your .mos, and it's due before the closing of con. And we have fantastic prizes. These are the resources. The Slacks form is really good. Slashers.org is a distro I made. Podvert's a really cool distro for making podcasts, because that's the cool thing. And we want those people to use Linux. That's my website. And there's uh, these two IRC channels that people will help you at. I went over that really fast. Did that make any sense at all? Kind of? You're good. You're good. OK. Um, anyway, that's an overview of how to do this. This computer over here is running Slasterus that we've got available right now. And I went in there, and I opened up the Etsy root copy, and I put a couple of my own config files in there. Not Etsy root copy, just the slash root copy. And I put a couple of my own config files in there. So when I boot it, it's got them already there. And I log in with root. I use my password, which is Tor. It's a live CD, so it runs a little slow. Now we've got a prompt. We're going to run asterisk. And now asterisk is loaded. And if the network works, which it seems to because we're not getting any errors, we call it. And my live CD is now an asterisk box running right there. Um, what is this handy for? Well, to have your own live CD, there's no trace on your computer of things you do. 
or maybe you need a backup of something. If you've got an Asterisk box, it's, you've only got one, you're kind of poor, and you use it for your telephone, and there's a software problem, you're configuring it and it breaks, and your wife needs to make a phone call, you just pop your live CD in that you made off your Asterisk, you know, your regular install of Linux with the Asterisk, and all of a sudden it works again. So you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what went wrong until you have time to do that. And that's really kind of neat to me. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Man, I talked really fast. I'm really sorry. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything? Do y'all want to see me do any of this stuff? Is that interesting? OK. Oh, sweet. Nah. Oh. Man, that's bad. I uh, just installed Slacker on here the other day. I don't have everything configured right. Because I was in the car and I didn't want to drive or play with Linux while I was driving. Um, has anyone ever made a, a live CD? Anybody? Yo, we will, okay. What'd you use? I don't remember. It was a couple years ago. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. Um, you can use damn small Linux, and the uh, Nopix stuff is open, and it's supposedly easy to remaster Nopix, but I really like Slacks because of the modules. Um, with Slasterisk, what we're planning on doing is having Asterisk working. We're going to plan on uh, kind of rewriting the config files so it's a lot easier for someone to just start up with Asterisk and say, oh, I bought this crappy grand screen phone. How do I hook it in? The information will be there to connect it. Um, how to connect to your VoIP provider. All that information will be in there. Just comment it out. Um, with the modules, we, I don't particularly like AMP, which is the Asterisk Management Portal. I don't want it on the disk. But other people might like it, and it's a pretty web interface of, for Asterisk. So you can put that as a module. Someone can add that module in, and it's ready to go. So all the cool things you want to do with your CD. <laughs> when, I, when I gave this talk from practice, it lasted a lot longer. I haven't had a lot of sleep, and I drank a lot of <laughs> jolt. Get that yes, at infonomicon.org. It's all there. What have we got? Slasterous. Ooh, I don't have anything in Slasterous. <laughs> Dum -dum 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 -dum. All right. QEMU. Don't even have it there. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared to be doing all this while we were doing this. Let's, let's backtrack. How do you like that? That did not work. What's that? How do you like that distro? Backtrack? Yeah. They're working on it. Right now. That's formerly known as Wax and Auditor. Yeah, it used to be Wax and Auditor. They merged. Wax was based on Slackware. Yeah. And they don't have a developer. Jeez. Yay. I don't obviously don't know how to use a computer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but whatever, we fooled y'all, y'all came to the talk. Um, <laughs> it seems that other people are calling. And I'm actually logging all this. And uh, there's a guy from Columbus, Ohio. That's his phone number. And there's a guy from New Jersey, which is uh, Slicko. And I'm going to have, I'm going to be sitting there trying to get my laptop working right, because it doesn't seem to, didn't have this trouble in practice. But I'm also going to have the uh, Slasher's box sitting there. And that's running off that live CD. If we rebooted it, there's no asterisk on there. We take the CD out. And it's going to be sitting over there by the Nauticon radio table, if anybody wants to play with it. Sound good? Is there any questions? Yes? So I take it that thing is up to a phone line, right? OK. With Asterisk, you have to have some kind of VoIP termination that plugs the network into the phone. Right. And I have an account with Broad Voice. Oh, you, so you have an Asterisk box hooked up to it, and hence the internet. Gotcha. Right. Just right there. Got it. I just pay them 20 bucks. They give me a username and password. Got it. Yeah, cool. um, yes? Somebody had that on a 54G. Who was that? Nobody that came to the talk. I talked to somebody today that has it on there. 
I don't know how well it works. I was going to say how well it works. Did they, did they have to make their own, you know, distro or just throw it on there? Or? I'm not sure. Huh. I haven't played around with it that way. I had to do Astro stuff for work, and then we made the podcast fertilizer Linux distro to kind of move people over to Linux as they want to do their little podcasting stuff. Yeah, well, and then that's not really practical. Huh? Isn't that a thing? Did you do a live We haven't done it yet. We're all doing some research on it so we can make a BinRev episode of live CDs. Um, then the Slasterist we came up with, and that was actually a pretty cool idea. Because sl Asterisk is a little daunting for people that want to try. It's easy. It's not hard. But it's kind of daunting, and the convict files are real scary. And it's really cool to have it on a live CD. All right. Anything else? Yes, sir. What is the difference between Union FS and Squash FS? I don't know how to describe it correctly, but it's used by Slacks to create. When you boot the CD, it looks like. Does anyone know the answer better than I do? OK, whatever I say is truth. Um, <laughs> it's magical. And no. Um, <laughs> um, when you boot it up and you see a root directory, that's what the kernel's seeing, that's what you're seeing, but that's not actually what is there. UnionFS and SquashFS kind of are behind that. And they're also used to shrink these modules very, very small so that your live CD isn't real big. Because you don't want to, like if you just gzipped it, it would be a lot larger. Make sense? They use it for compression and start gzip? I believe so. It's some kind of weird file system that they can compress it more. I think this is the first time, like the real use of it like that, I think it's used a lot of embedded devices. Doesn't it have to do that uh, all the changes to files on the file system are memory resident because you can't write? Yeah, it's all resident in the memory. So you can't write it. So if you use the, uh, you use the config save, it'll save it to a .mo, put it somewhere, and then add it to your CD later. Sound good? Did anybody learn anything about Asterisk and Linux and stuff? One guy? Yes. Can you give that guy a coupon? And anybody that asks a question gets a coupon too. Uh, see Nightlord, he's going to raise his hand. And if you didn't ask a question and you just can fool him, he'll give you a coupon and it's for prizes later. <laughs> um, anything else? Yes, sir. OK. Depends on the version of Slacks that you use. The guy that makes it doesn't like to install it on computers. He thinks it needs to be a live CD. But there is a command. I've never done it because it's kind of pointless. But uh, yes, you can. And the new version of Slacks that just came out like three or four days ago has it on there. And it'll install it to your computer. And then you have your distro. Um, the kernel that we had to install when we were doing the Linux Live stuff already has the squash FS and the uh, union FS built into it. So it's a lot easier just to use that one than compile it in yourself. Unless you're cool, and then you can do it. Yes, sir? When you see squash FS and union FS, like both on one like, live CD, what, what do you actually mean? Like, is it like running at the same time? or? I believe that they're used for different things. Oh. One of them can maybe makes the small files, and i do not sure. I haven't gotten into it that far, y'all. Good deal? Um, if you go to the Slack's forums, they will probably tell you. Okay. And the two distros that I made, I'm not really making a lot of modules for the developer edition. It's all in the root copy, so it's easy for people to look at. And uh, when we actually release the real distro, we'll actually make a module, which is a little faster. Anything else? Yes, sir. Have you worked on any other uh, distros or Slackware? What do you mean? Or uh, making live CDs? 
you can do this. Li the Linux live scripts will do it from any distro. There's a couple other nuances that you have to do, but they're usually pretty documented in the Slacks forums. I've only used Slackware to do it, and you have to cut a lot of stuff out of Slackware to make a live CD that'll fit on the damn CD. Good deal? Yeah. Okay. I do notice that there's a couple of uh, bigger distros that you can drive out here. It's simply Memphis. It's also have a, a version that's a live CD mm -hmm. and also can install. It's designed to be both. Yeah. Probably better than like, people try to use Nopix to install it. It doesn't work as well. Okay. Yeah. CD or can I put it on a USB drive? You can put it on a USB if. Okay, you can't put the ISO on a, on a USB. You're going to have to put the file system on there and tell it to boot from that. Good deal? Um, Iron Geek. Thank you. Can I have a real quick? Yeah. I want to try the radio episodes way back when. I can't remember who recorded it. But it turned me on to a live CD called Kinotix. If you use the Kinopix, it's very much like Kinotix, except for. Actually, sorry, if you use Kinopix, it's very much like Kinotix. Kinotix only pulls the packages from Debian SID. So if you do an app git update, app git disk upgrade, it's not going to screw up everything and mess up all your dependencies. You can actually do a hard drive install of Kinotix without really messing up the box if you start upgrading everything. And it's a, like a just simple way of installing a basic uh, Debian install. So if you're going to do a hard drive install from any live CD, I recommend it. Okay. Um, one of the Thing you can do with these live CDs, which I have successfully done. Yeah, I just have to move my talk down. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, uh, I I see I, I put uh, one inside using uh, QEMU or however you want to pronounce that. Um, launch it as a uh, Windows screensaver. So like when the screensaver would fire up, it would actually launch QEMU, which would then launch the um, the live CD. And so in the Windows screensaver, you know you just wouldn't set the full or you could I had mine set to full screen. So you launch it through there, and the screensaver gets preemptive CPU cycles off of Windows so that you get better performance using the demo through the screensaver. But we're not using Windows, right? I don't know how to use Linux, so I can't really say anything. <laughs> All right, anything? How does this compare to um, Linux from scratch? Linux from scratch is a big nuisance to do. This is a lot easier to do, and Slacks is one of the quickest booting live CDs that I've found. Um, Linux from scratch actually installs on your computer for building everything. It's a little harder than Gentoo. Okay. But you can install it and then put the Linux live scripts and build your own if you're hardcore. <laughs> if you have a lot of free time. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Anybody that wants a coupon, go talk tonight or... And I think that's it. Thank you all for coming. I'm sorry I rushed through it. I kind of feel bad about it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's infonomicon.org is the website that has all the contact information and the, uh, the presentation. There, there isn't any of the stuff really written out like this anywhere on the internet. You have to spend a lot of time figuring it out. So look at the presentation later if you want to do it. Yeah. Ah. Oh, we took.